Let's go to Romans 2, 5 through 8. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. But after the hardness and impenitent heart, what does impenitent mean? If I am saying that correctly. Not feeling shame or regret about one's actions or attitudes. So this is saying you are out there sinning, doing whatever you want to do, even when you know that you are doing wrong, but you are not caring. You are just out there, just messing around, whatever else. Okay. But after the hardness and impenitent heart, so your heart is evil because you want to disobey God purposely because you think that it is fun to do whatever God is telling you not to do. Okay, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous. So what does it mean by against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God? Can this be talking about the great tribulation? Now, some people believe that everyone have to take part in the great tribulation where there is going to be so much chaos and stuff like that. Now, some people don't believe in the rapture. But from what this is saying, if you are out there sinning, doing whatever you want to do, you are going to take part in. So let's see if it talks about if the righteous have to take part in this. Take part in the great tribulation. If this is speaking about the great tribulation here. Verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? So according to your deeds, God is going to punish you. And the opposite is true as well. Some people may say, well, I am not going to do this for this particular person because this person would not do it for me. What is verse 6 saying? He will render to every man according to his deeds. So you can become or get blessed by God by doing good to people. It does not matter what other people are doing for you. Myself, many things that I do for people, I know to a certain extent that they may not do the same things for me, but that is not going to stop me from helping people. Yes, you can say that I am being used and blah, 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 but in a way, I am not being used because why? God is going to render to every man according to his deeds. So I am going to get blessed each time by doing good to other people. And if they are using me, they are going to be cursed. They are going to be punished. And then we can go on verse 5 for that. And they are treasurous up for themselves wrath against the day of wrath. So how can I lose? How can I lose even if I am being used? How can you lose? Because in verse 6, it is telling you that God is going to repay you. Whether it is good or bad. So if you are doing good, you are going to get blessed by God. If you are doing bad, you are going to get cursed by God. So how can you lose? 
well, you know, I am being used and I don't like the feeling of being used. Who does? But this is why you have to lean on the word of God and not your own understanding. Because with earthly knowledge, that is just going to get you into trouble. Go by the word of God. Who made this world? God. So what we have been taught in school or by our friends and stuff like that is wrong. Many of it is wrong if it is not based upon the Bible. That should really make sense. So when you give not only money, but your time, effort, so on and so on, things will be given back to you. And it does not always have to be in the form of money. What good is money if you are always sick? I would think that I would want good health first, right? Like, hey, let me give you two million dollars, but let me give you cancer as well, since you only care about money. If you have cancer, like really bad cancer, how can you enjoy money? How can you enjoy new cars and stuff like that? You won't be able to. So give me good health first. Give me the things that I need to function in life first. Then give me money afterward. Makes sense, right? Only thing that many people think of, money, 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 money. What good is money if everything else is out of whack? No matter how much money you have, if you have terrible health, <laughs> what good is money? <laughs> Verse 7, my Lord. Well, I don't feel blessed by God because, you know, I don't have a lot of money. But you have other things, right? You are blessed. You are only seeing in one direction. Verse 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So those who follow the rules and regulations of God, you are going to heaven. You are going to live forever after you die. Because you know, after we die, only our bodies die, but our spirit lives on. And your spirit is either going to live in heaven or it is going to live in hell or the lake of fire. This is why you need to give your life to God immediately. Give me a second, please. Let me see. Here we go. So you are going to heaven if you are following the rules and regulations of the Bible. If you go to verse 5, this is saying... You are not going to heaven. Why? Because you have a hard heart and you are impenitent. Meaning, you are just going out there sinning like, hey, I know this is wrong, but I love having sex before marriage. Or I love lying, stealing, cheating, so on and so on. Yes, I know that there is a God, but whatever. Well, <laughs> you are storing up more wrath on the day of wrath. Many people say that, why does God allow so many bad things to happen on earth? Like earthquakes, babies dying, people dying, so on and so on. Well, he made you to serve him. If you don't want to serve God, okay, make your own self. If you can't make your own self or defeat God, why are you fighting or rebelling against God? Makes no sense. 
If you can't defeat God, why rebel and whatever else? He made you. What if you made something and it was not doing or operating in the way that you wanted it to operate? What would you do? Of course, you would do something about it, toss it out or try to fix it in some type of way. What do you believe that God is doing to us? This is why he punishes people to do what is right. Hey, I don't want to send you to hell, but let me allow bad things to happen to you so it can change your mind so you can start serving me. But all we see, or many people see, hey, God is punishing me. God is a really mean God. What? He made you to serve him. You are not serving him, hence bad things are happening to you. That should not be a hard thing to understand there. This is why many bad things are happening on this earth, because many people don't want to serve God. So if you start serving God, perhaps all of these bad things will stop happening to this world. So you can't blame God. You have to blame yourself because he made you and you are not operating in the way that he made you. So hence, he is going to allow bad things to happen until you get your mind right. Because he don't want to send you to hell or other people as well. He don't. That's why he is punishing you so you can change your ways. But many people are so hard-hearted. Hey, I don't care. I am going to rebel all the way to death. So silly. That is very, very silly. But hey, that's your life. Where am I? Verse 8, but unto them that are contentious, what does contentious mean? Let's look it up. Causing or likely to cause an argument controversial. So people who love to argue. I know many of us know people like this. I really dislike arguing so much. So now you know contentious mean folks who love to argue. So you can start using that word. <laughs> you are very contentious. Okay. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey on righteousness. So you just like doing whatever you want to do, even when it is wrong. So this is saying almost the same thing as verse five. Okay. Indignation and wrath. So what is indignation? Indignation, indignation is anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment. So anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment. So the letter filled Lucy with indignation, indignation. So anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment. Okay, that makes sense. So, but unto them that are contentious, so you just want to go out there and sin and do whatever you want to do and do not obey the truth like you know the truth, but you still choose to not do it, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So, hey, so pretty much you are pushing God's hand. I don't want to do any bad things to you, but what you are doing, you are forcing me to do something. Don't provoke God. 
you know the right thing to do, but you still choose to do the wrong things. You are pushing God to punish you, which he does not want to do, but you are making him do it. Well, Kevin, you know living for God is very hard, yes, but being cursed by God is even more difficult. I would say that, right? So if living for God is hard and being cursed is much more difficult and going to hell is worse, so which is the best out the three? I would think living for God because how would you like continuing being cursed? It does not feel good, right? How would you like going to hell? Which is worst? I believe you don't want to go there. Some people believe that they are going to be partying and talking to friends and stuff like that. No. You are not. You are going to be in torment. You are going to be in so much pain. Have you ever had a headache that was so bad to the point where you could not open your eyes, you did not want to speak to no one, like you just wanted to sleep? Now, if hell was only that, would you be able to speak to your friends and party and stuff like that? No. Okay, now there is going to be fire and people tormenting you in hell. So if a headache can disable you so much, how about a person cutting off your skin or chopping up your body parts and not being able to die because you are already dead. Your body dies, but your spirit does not die. Imagine that. This is why I try to help people to come to God. Which you can really do whatever you want to do. But I don't want you to be in any pain. Yes, I don't know you. And I may not ever talk to you. Even though I still don't want you to be in torment. That should make sense, right? I don't want you to be in pain. I don't want you to be in torment, but this is why I am giving you the truth. I am showing you the scriptures right here. So you can't say that I am making things up. You can't say that. So really take heed to this. Repent of your sins. If you have any questions, hey, I can help you out. And I try to answer all questions unless you start cursing and talking crazy then no <laughs> I am not going to mess with you so really take heed to this change your life give your life to God if you don't you are going to regret it you really are God bless